Hi, everybody. <laughs> Happy Tuesday. Look, I'm coming to you from New York with this cutest thing in the whole world. So I'm late today, or I'm, I'm right on time. I'm, I decided to do the Tuesday talk uh, right now at 4 p.m. and change it up a little bit. So welcome, welcome. I also wanted to share this bundle of joy that is oh, bringing me so much happiness right now. This cutie patootie. This is Bindi, three-month-old little chihuahua that I'm looking out after. I'm staying at my friend's place here in New York. And who doesn't want to just see this amount of cuteness on a Tuesday? <laughs> All right, so what's up, what's up? I'm Lisa Meta from metamorphize.com. Teaching you the science of change so that you can be the creator of your life. And today is the fourth part of the last part, four part series that I've been doing um, the last four weeks on RISE Rise, which is my 90 day group program and I have just been covering R as in what does R stand for? R stands for release, I imagine, S is share and E today is evolve. So if you're joining me, just give me an icon, say what's up. It's not morning, usually I'm sipping my coffee. I'm going to be doing a tarot reading so if you want to drop a number in the chat or in the comments I'll I'll do a personalized reading for you. We'll be doing animal cards today. Hi, Liz. I made it. Look. Look at this. Look at this cuteness I have with me. Oh, my God. Seriously, I'm having a hard time getting anything done with this thing in my life right now. <laughs> oh. Anyway, so, um, yeah, evolve. Let's see. And you reminded me it was the solstice, the winter solstice, Liz. So I kind of... Uh, did some thinking about that and how one of the things I really wanted to talk about today. So Evolve is the last part of the RISE sequence, R-I-S-E, because I really want to emphasize the fact that RISE, I mean, sorry, evolving is an art form. You know, we spend a lot of time wanting to get somewhere to this there, to this happy, to this abundance, to this prosperity, to this relationship, to this health goal. And what I've seen in myself and in others is this uncanny way that we actually stop ourselves at the 80% mark or 95 or even 99. And we don't even allow ourselves to get to the thing because what happens is as we're evolving and changing, we bring ourselves to this point and then we, we have this way of like, oh no, who am I? Who am I going to be? The old identity has to leave. The new identity has to come in. And evolving and allowing yourself to shed an old identity and step into the new identity is an art form. And it holds inside of it. Evolving holds inside of it the definition and the essence of change to develop gradually. I'm going to put the cuteness down right now because it's so distracting for me. All right, I'm back. I'm here. I'm back. My uh, my animal, my spirit animal, apparently is puppy right now. Cute ass puppy. Puppy. Um. So yeah. Inside the definition of evolving holds the essence of change, which is this ever evolving, ever constant morphine, metamorphizing to leave one state of being and flow into another. So, oh, thanks, yeah, it's old school. My mom's, my mom, I, I took it from my mom's closet. Rock and the emerald and the, um, all of the royal colors right now. So, the thing here is that if change is constant and if evolving is just our nature, then it is our responsibility to develop a relationship with change, which is why my entire, not rise, but my system inside of my metamorphosis company is called the science of change. The science of change is about how, how you need to learn, how we all need to learn, if you want to be a conscious um, creator in your life, 
how you uniquely move through change. How, what's your relationship with resistance, with fear, with even this idea of happy? Like, do, will you let yourself have happy? Will you let yourself enjoy the waves of life? They are moving, but you stay steady inside of them. And so the solstice thing brought up this idea of systems and cycles and seasons and how many things that we can use to learn how we move through change. And if you know me and you know any of the work I do, like we do in the Self Mastery Lab and all of my workshops and one of my signature um, breath workshops is called Breath Journey Chakra Integration. Because I use the chakra system as a way of mirroring my evolution, as a way of knowing where I am inside of a cycle of change. And um, previous programs I've done have used the seasons. What up, Sarah? How you doing? Um, seasons. Here's some cycles. Here's some systems that you can you think about and which one might resonate with you for looking at how do you want to maybe reflect out to the outer world to see where you are in your own personal internal evolution? So chakras, seasons, quarterly, you know, business does quarterly. We're looking at the quarterly measures of things. Um, moon cycles, astrological cycles. Uh, I said the chakras. I said the seasons. I don't know if you can think of any more. There's so many. I mean, they're the 11 forgotten laws, the hermetic laws. Kabbalah, like all of these have systems and even just our body as a functioning system, we can look at that all the time, like where you feel ten tension, where you feel pain, where you feel um, stuck in life could also be mirrored in the system of your body, organs, the flow of breath. I mean, there's just so many ways that we can look at how are we evolving, where do we evolve, where do we need, where do we feel stuck in our evolution? And to know that it's an art form. And so just like any art, if you can't just like, you know, pick up some markers and just be a masterpiece, uh, still art artist, I mean, it takes practice. So be the creator of your life, which is my tagline in my company, is about learning how to use the different paints and the paintbrushes and the tools and all of these things that are given to us, the seasons, the cycles, the chakras, <laughs> are your body, and how do you uniquely move through life so that you are achieving what you want to achieve? Even how do you move through moments of frustration so that you're not there longer than you need to be? How can you use, how can you use every single thing that's happening to you as a way to evolve, to grow, to keep going, to keep flowing? I often talk about two very distinct um, metaphors slash analogies and visuals. One is this idea of like the evolving is kind of like you're unzipping the skin and you're kind of like stepping out when you're ready. Another, here's, a, yeah, actually another way, nature. I can't believe I didn't think of that one. Nature is a huge, huge teacher for me in my evolution. I mean, Nature is my guru. Nature holds like all the wisdom that we need to see that everything blooms in its own time. Back to the solstice energy, which is like the winter is about going inward. The winter is about the darkness, but the trusting that in the darkness right now, there will be light, right? There's like the change of the days happening right now where the longest day, um, the darkest day to the lightest day and we don't, I think there's deep faith and trust in certain cycles like gravity. We know that if I drop this, it's going to fall. There's, there's no, we don't question that. But yet we spend a lot of time questioning our decisions and questioning a lot of things when actually it's really about making decisions and learning to be a conscious decision maker. And a lot of what I talk about in, a lot of what we do in the RISE program to get to this point of evolving is looking at your thoughts and your programming and your stories and your decision making skills why you hold back making decisions what are you afraid of how do you use fear as your guide in life to move forward um 
why we live sometimes from the outside in versus the inside out in how we need to learn to trust ourselves more. A huge part of the program is learning to trust yourself. But to trust yourself, and this is the thing about trusting yourself and confidence, they come from stepping into it. Courage, I remember hearing um, Oprah one year, she was setting her theme uh, for one of the years and she said, this year is going to be about courage. And then fast forward at the end of the year, she said, well, be careful what words you choose because to step to have a year of to be courageous and have courage, you're going to be put into situations that have you step into being courageous, push you to the edges of your of change. And that's what we do in Rise, but it's a safe environment where you get to play around with those edges and you also get to see the mirroring of your your breath. We use the body as a tool. Your breath is this natural capacity, a container to hold the capacity in which that you're growing. Your inhale is your ability to receive. Your exhale is your ability to give, metaphorically. We play around with those edges. So this is a really great program. It's um, limited to 14 people. We have around eight now. It starts in March. So this is really great. We have an early bird special going on right now, and it's just a really great group program if you're looking for that combination of individual growth, but inside of a community of support. And um, and if you want to just, you know, kind of up level your, your evolution, up level your skills in how you propel yourself forward in life, kind of get underneath the hood a little, maybe why certain things aren't growing the way you want them to or as fast as you'd like them to. So um, the other metaphor, so I was talking about the that unzipping thing. The other one is this concept of imagining as we grow, you know, a lot of the times we focus so much on, I got to let go, I got to let go. It's always this let go energy. I don't usually focus so much on the letting go, although I do pay a lot of, I honor a lot of what might have happened in the past to lead you to this moment in your life. But what I focus on mostly is this idea that because we're evolving and we're shedding skins that every version of you is kind of like this behind your back, behind your back, behind every version you're like evolving, taking the, with you the best parts of you and you're stepping into the next and all of you, 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 all the you's behind you have your back. So evolving is not about like this full idea of like out with the old and in with the new. It's kind of like that's why the unzipping and the shedding it's more of like you're you're taking the best of you because you're learning and you're just keep on moving keep on growing keep on you know one of my things i always say all the time is stay steady you gotta stay steady just keep going you know gather information i, I used to well, how did i get here talking about conscious decision making because i couldn't make simple decisions in my life i had to find a way you know even like i couldn't even order from a menu sometimes because I was living from the outside in. So I'm, I'm teaching these things because I was paralyzed inside of my own mind of overthinking, overanalyzing, not being able to navigate the world based on my own desires and take action and, and stay steady. There was a lot of start and stop. There was a lot of self-doubt. There was a lot of sabotage and definitely lined with addiction, which is how I soothed myself. So... We're doing tea instead of coffee, <laughs> instead of morning. Ooh, strong. I put a lot of lemon in there. Okay, so conscious decision making has so much to do with, and I brought up the addiction thing because in addiction, decisions are made by satisfac satisfying the moment. And a lot of times you're unable to make a decision that's based on later. And conscious decision making is the ability to make decisions that are following a path, an unfolding. We're talking so much about this in the lab lately, my self mastery lab. This idea of like trusting the unfolding. And I can tell you through the work, the evolutionary work that I've done to know myself, love myself, and trust myself. Trusting the unfolding has gotten so much easier. I mean, honestly, I never thought I was going to be able 
to relax and find peace with trusting the unfolding. I mean, life would just would feel so hard a lot of the time. Hey, Michael, what's up? If you want a card, what's the number that you want? I'm going to be pulling cards in a minute. So I have this poem I wanted to read that I wrote. It's actually on my homepage of my website. Because evolving is so much to do with metamorphizing, metamorphosis. You know, metamorphize is the company in my is my company name since as long as I can remember you I think there was AOL and you had to create like a screen name. And I remember like always trying to make up words and I was like, metamorphize. And it just became or I became it. I don't know. My my middle name is Meta. And I think uh, the concept of change, I've always been fascinated. I remember growing up and every, uh, people would ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I would always say a motivational speaker, which I think is kind of funny. Um, and yeah, so here's the poem. <sighs> which is also, I think I have it as an audio. I'll put it somewhere, but it goes like this. It is time to create the next version of yourself. Your old way of doing things isn't working anymore. Wait, we have to bring up the cuteness. Hold on. Somebody came to see that. What? Talk about evolving. Since I've been here, since I've been here, she has jumped up on the couch. I taught her how to jump up on the couch. <laughs> okay, we're reading a poem, okay? All right. I know. I wanted to see if I could get the to come up. Here it is bigger. It is time to create the next version of yourself. Your old way of doing things isn't working anymore. Deep down, you know things need to change. But you're afraid. You feel stuck. And you don't know what lies ahead. And you don't know where to start. There comes a time to turn towards the future and decide that the past is just a series of moments leading you here to the edge of expansion, growth, and change. It's time to release the old you and feel excited about who you are becoming. It's time to move through the fear and the discomfort of the unknown to emerge on the other side, refined and renewed. It is time to decide that you are worthy of your dreams. It is time to rise. <laughs> All right, let's do some cards. Um, if you are interested in rise, I would be more than happy to talk with you about it. Uh, we can get on a call. We can, you know, decide if it's the right program for you. Just here to support, just here to help, just here to... Uh, be be a beacon and, and, a, and a guiding light to your next level, you know? Could never have gotten where I am without a bunch of people. I mean, they really mean it when they say it takes a village to do anything. So let me check on my... Okay, I got you, Tino. I'll do you first on number one. Just want to make sure I got all of my... Oh, yeah. I'll end with this last thought about evolution, that it's not just about you. You know, when you start to make changes, you have a ripple out effect that affects everyone. And actually, there is a piece of this in the art of evolving that we cover very deeply because as you change, sometimes it's the world around you that wants to keep you where you are. Not necessarily, um, it's like ti the time lag. It's, I call it the universal time lag where like you're trying to, you're catching up to your own change. And sometimes I'm like, I feel like light years away with an idea. And then this, this thing called time and space has like this reality time in it. So just be careful that if you're making changes that you're just aware of the people around you and just let them know, you know, I'm making changes. So don't hold me to the old me. I'm, I'm, I'm allowed to make a different decision and I'm different now. And, you know, make start making these declarations and these claims. Because you are evolving, whether you know it or not, whether you want to believe it or not, because, oh, hey, Louise, because 
we are constantly changing. So you're either the conscious decision maker and the creator of it and you're doing this by design or you're doing it by default. That's the truth of it. And I'm here to help you navigate your mind and navigate your life physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually so that you are the creator of your life because it can sneak up those old programs and those stories from our past. We don't even know we're playing them out half the time. All right, here we go. Let's pull some cards. All right. Uh, Michael, this is for you, number one, boom, 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 and here we go, one. The mouse, number 20. All right. Mice are really, really resourceful, very smart animals. Scrutiny. Let's see. Um, if you want to, uh, I'm doing personal tarot readings, you can drop a number in the chat window and I'll pull a card for you if you're just joining me here. Um, Ernst, I think that's your name, I can't tell. Just checking the comments over here on Facebook. Okay, so yeah, mouse. Scrutiny. Mouse people, let's see. If your personal medicine is mouse, you may be fearful of life, but very well organized with a compartment for everything. You should try to see a larger picture than the one staring you in the face. Develop, try to become aware of the great dance of life. Ooh, I love that. That's like the great dance, which is the evolution. So don't get stuck. That's the thing, actually, you know, not to get too stuck in any micro or any macro. It's the dance between the two. That is, oh, that's what I have here. Um, explore the dance of who you are and who you are becoming. Each new phase of evolving requires a new level of ownership, power, and compassion. I love that. I love that for you. That's the other cute dog. There's two dogs here. Um, I love dog energy. I'm in dog energy right now. Okay. Um, a few people wrote in to me because I didn't do it this morning. We have Liz at 6. Here you go, Liz. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right. Horse. What? That's hilarious. Liz works with horses. Hilarious. Perfect, I guess you could say. 35. And, you know, talk about you being around some medicine all the time, Liz. I mean, you literally are part horse probably at this point i wonder if, i mean have you ever looked up horse stuff i'm sure you have and also i realize that sometimes this book is a medicine book versus their spirit animal book that slightly is different when you're looking up animals okay 35 power duh horsepower i'm trying to remember the deck more i should think first and then look it up <laughs> Horsepower. Well, there is power in you and all of us embracing the ability to be the creators of our life. There is power that um, we have power. We have silent power. We have physical power. We have brute strength. We have soft power. You know, I, I almost feel like this is a, an invitation to learn the spectrum of your, uh, you know, like the, the rainbows of power, the, the portfolio of power available to you. And especially because you work with the horses and how can your power, how can you step, how can stepping into your power right now help you in your evolution? Where does, like, where's your power in your life? I mean, I, I, I've had to think about that for me and my business. You know, my power is I have incredible listening skills. I can extract and, and, and mirror back. That's power for me. Um, my, yeah, my ability to reflect is power. And I have a very, very non-judgmental way of moving through life. But that wasn't always the case. In fact, it was completely the opposite for a long time. So I would say that. Don't underestimate these things that you're trying to get rid of or let go of are also your superpowers. And the thing is that 
they have to be held on a spectrum so that you know when to call upon it, but it's not the only thing there. So when I say, when I say the like spectrum of power, it's kind of like people that only go from zero to 60. It's like, no, no, there's all these spaces in between. Ah, spaces in between. I keep saying that. What up? What up? Oh, here's the other cuteness, everyone. This is Pebble. <laughs> You've got a lot of energy right now. All right. Um, then we had Berna at five. One, two, three, four, five. The weasel. Actually, didn't you get the weasel last time? Excuse me. Someone, oh wait, someone got the weasel. I think that was you, Liz. And then you look, you you looked it up, or you said that you saw a weasel somewhere. Okay. Let's see, thirty-three, which is also a sacred number here. Stealth, Berna. You've been getting a lot of these interest. No, wait. I think you got the weasel last week. So yeah, I mean, the weasel, talk about the silent power. The weasel has a silent power because it's able to come in and you don't even see it. It's smooth, it's stealth. And sometimes when you're evolving, you, you, you've probably seen these memes out there that are like, don't talk about it, just do it. You know, you don't need to tell a million people that you're doing it, just, just, just. <sighs> Weasel on up in there to do it. Show them. Don't talk. Don't tell them. Just show them. So that's kind of where I'm going with stealth on that one, especially in relation to evolution. It's just like, just, just keep going, you know, just be stealth in your own life. Um, leave people alone. Don't go where you're not wanted. Follow. I have rules. Follow the love, the laughter, and the joy. If you do that, you're in good place. Like I am in so much joy right now with these animals. And I'm pretty much kind of like in lockdown over here in New York for right now. It's like kind of weird out there. And I'm just trying to be chill before I leave for Mexico. And I realized, you know, talk about an awakening because I've been wanting dogs. I'm like, I have so much love to give that now I realize like I just need to get some dogs. I feel happy, content. I'm like, I'm not thinking about what's going on out there. I like lying on the couch with these cutie patooties. The opposite of that is I'm not getting a lot of things done right now anyway all right um the next card and if you're just joining me and you want me to pick a uh, animal card for you just drop a number in the chat and i'll be doing that oh hey mac how did you learn to read these cards is there a wombat card i don't i'll look up if there's a wombat but if you want to if you want a card just drop a number and i'll, I'll pick one for you <laughs> and then i'll look up in the glossary if there's a wombat are you, why, are you having some wombat energy right now going through? Um, all right, Gigi had nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Gigi, you got the lizard. 36. We're in the 30s a lot right now. Dreaming. Perfect for evolving. You must dream. You must connect the dots. And actually speaking of that, in the RISE program, the first week is inventory because we have to connect the dots of where you are or where you've been and where you're going. Dreaming has a huge part of that. I love this picture of the lizard. Lizard medicine is the shadow side of reality where your dreams are reviewed before you decide to manifest them physically. Yeah, huge part of evolution. This is why we do the eye for imagine you got to see it in your mind and then you can create it in your life s share use group environment to magnify your dreams put it out there i don't know gg if you're interested in the rise program but this is what we've been talking about um and mindy eight one two three four five six seven eight jaguar wow beautiful animal in fact 51. Here we go. Jaguar. Integrity. Impeccability. That is the lens. Oh, hey, Francisco. I got you at 5. 47 always. Okay, my grandma was nicknamed Wombat. I have a Wombat tattoo. She was a fiery woman and had a Wombat crossing sign on her fridge. 
Okay. Wombat it is. So Jaguar, um, I'll do five Francisco and then 47. So what I want to say about impeccability and about integrity is that that's a lens that you wear in life. You know those four agreements and one of them is, is keep your word and be impeccable with your word because there's that saying, I know I'm, like, I'm doing weird cliche quotes today, but that saying, uh, integrity is doing the right thing when no one's watching. And that's, that's true. It's really that simple. Like, what is your moral compass? Where's your north as the person? You know, and the more your integrity is held with what you say you'll do, you'll do. Well, that ripple out effect will create an abundance of personal self-trust. The self-trust will create confidence. The confidence will create power. And the power will have you cycling into really believing in yourself and you're creating proof in your life that you, when you show up, things happen. You take action. And what happens a lot, and this is what pretty much every program I teach what happens is this start and stop energy because we actually just don't know how to set ourselves up for success. So we set ourselves for, for failure and then we wonder why we're not successful. But the, the trick is it comes way before. Set yourself up for success. Do smaller things and be successful at it. And that builds the confidence. That builds your integrity, your impeccability with your word. If there's anything that I would say my work would be hinged on is the concept of keeping your word to yourself, trusting yourself again, loving yourself, trusting yourself, and knowing yourself. Those are the, the, the pillars to evolving gracefully and loving your journey, not just getting to a there. There is no there. The minute, the minute you create a there, it turns into another there. And actually, I had to blow up my own spot when I did the um, talk on potential. And ever since that talk, that talk changed my life because I was like, reach your potential. I kept on having that in my marketing and I realized there's no such thing. Cause the, and, and that was like the, what is it? The like carrot and the dog running to get it and it keeps moving. It was a trap. I was trapping myself thinking that I was going to reach my potential. There is no potential to reach. I'm already at... The pure potentiality is a field in which I'm living inside of, not something I, I get to. It's already here. Pur pure potentiality is all around me. It's whether or not I want to change the lens in which I'm seeing it. So integrity and impeccability, those are lenses. Perspective shifting, you know, this is another, this is week two of the RISE program, which is basically... The things around you don't always change, but the way you see them can. And when you see them different, I mean, we've all had that thing where it's like, click, and you're just like, what? Even like reading something over and over in my newsletters, and then I could swear there's no freaking typo. And then my dad will read it and be like, there's a typo in line one. It's like, it's funny how our eyes play tricks on us, right? The illusions, the maya, the way that we're just, it's almost like the programming starts to take over and that's why I say question everything. Question, is that mine? Is that my story? Is that how I want it? Do I like this? You're allowed to do that, you know? Permission to que question everything. All right, Francisco, number five. One, two, three, four, five. The ant. You want to get down? Bye-bye, everyone. This is Pebble. Pebble saying bye-bye. You have to get down. You can't focus. Okay, the ant, number 32, another 30. Definitely in the threes right now. Seven, Jamal, I got you. All right, 32, interesting. And just know that these are collective readings. So we're here as a group. We'll never have the same spread again. And I like to enforce that because we live in a, what's my card? What's mine, mine, mine? But actually, we're all here together. Patience, 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 patience. If you have ant medicine, you eat slowly and deliberately and are content in knowing that what is yours will come to you. We were just talking about that. It's coming. 
It's happening. Oh wait. Sorry. This is this is Francisco. This is you. Patience. It's happening. <laughs> Um, ant people have a knowing about the sweet victory at the end of the line. Yes. Mary Morrissey talks about expectation being an active form of patience, an active form of waiting. You know, we get so impatient waiting in lines, waiting, waiting, waiting. Actually, we can use our time differently. Um, on the episode I did on gratitude, one of the things that one of the people was talking about is that next time you're in a line, train yourself to use that time to do something beneficial. Say a few things you're grateful for. Run in your mind an affirmation. Um, ask yourself what's good, what's working today, what, how do I feel productive, who is someone I could connect with. Like, we have these opportunities always there, and we have these choices always there. Patience, again, a little bit of a lens. Patience is, is you have a choice to be impatient. And yes, you know what, sometimes it can be very difficult. You're, you know, you're trying to get somewhere, someone's waiting, there's traffic, whatever. I have this thing um, called timeline jumping, where like, no matter what's happening, like if I go somewhere and then I forget something, my coat at the desk or the, my, at the table and I have to go back or like, oh, no, I need to, sorry, I have to go to the bathroom. I always think like actually I'm jumping on new timelines. Like instead of like I'm not I'm making people wait or whatever, I just think what if everything is recalibrating at all times for my best case scenario and I'm inside of this I don't know, 2D, 3D space that's like, go get your jacket or you forgot something upstairs. But actually, I'm living in something, some matrix that's way bigger for me to understand. So I love that um, ant medicine, that reminder of patience. Uh, one type of ant would, will burrow a conical hole with its apex at the bottom. The ant will cover itself patiently, wait for some unsuspecting insect to fall in as the sand crumbles the prey eventually falls to the bottom only to find ants open jaws <sighs> if ant meandered into your spread today it is a time to show a little trust and patience in some of life's situations you may have forgotten that you will always receive that which you need at the time you need it most it is not on the horizon or just around the next anthill. You may need to use some strategy. How can you put to use your power of creation until it arrives, whatever it means to you at this time? Because the art of evolving requires us to apply patience, action, thinking, um, Perspective shifting, actually, the curriculum of RISE. Thinking, perspective shifting, pivoting, visioning, creating, evolving. All right. 47. I think I'm going to have to read. Uh, oh, wait, there's how many in this deck? There's 51. So I'm going to take from the bottom. 51, 50, 49, 48, 47. Buffalo, Mac, Buffalo, 19. Here we go. And then um, seven for Jamal, and then we'll probably wrap it up today. I'm trying to find a better time. I, I'm, I need to change things up a little bit. Tuesday mornings. Um, I don't know, what time do you guys like to, to do these things? I don't know about evening either. Maybe in the middle of the day. Like a lunchtime thing maybe? Noon? I'm going to be in Mexico. Noon sounds good right before I go to the beach. Again. <laughs> Alright. Here we go. 
Buffalo is prayer and abundance. Mac, prayer and abundance. Buffalo medicine is to smoke the pipe in a sacred manner, to use buffalo medicine, and to praise for the richness of life to be shared with all races, all creatures, all nations. Buffalo medicine is a sign that you achieve nothing without the aid of the great spirit and that you must be humble enough to ask for that assistance and then be grateful for what you receive. I love this because that's kind of what really I was just talking about by being in the matrix. There are things that we feel we need to do, but there is this trust of that unfolding that I was talking about. So that ripple effect is you, you are the one dropping the stone or the whatever into the water, but the ripple happens on its own. So there is this trust in making choices and decisions and watching the ripple and keep moving, gathering information and trusting that it's on its way. So you are working in co-creation with whatever your belief systems are. And actually in this talk, we talked about other systems that can be there for you. And I did not mention actually universe as in energy or if God is something that you work with as in Bible or Testament or Quran or the Kabbalistic teachings. Um, for me, like I said, nature is my guru. I am very much into energy and I believe what I put out comes back in, both in vibration and frequency. Um, so yeah, I love that for just also what an amazing card. Um, you may be asked to use your energy in prayer. And I think the heart, not the hardest, but like the, the tricky thing about prayer is what I've always suffered with in some ways is like really getting clear about what do I want? Prayer is asking for what you want. There's so many kinds of prayers. I talked about uh, help me as a prayer. I talked about, um, I can't remember the other one I did. There's lots of kinds of prayers that are very simple. Okay, seven, Jamal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Prairie dog. What? 47. Interesting. I always, I don't know, I'm all about things that are connected. And I love prairie dogs. These dogs here are like prairie dogs. You're like, Meep. Um. All right, let's see, let's see. <laughs> 47 on the prairie dog when I go to Colorado it's something I always know when I'm driving back from, from the airport into Boulder I'm always like obsessed with the prairie dogs I wonder what their habitat is down there you know those kind of under the earth animals they always have two doors multiple doors in and out they have like a network down there because if one gets toppled over or a predator comes in one they need another one to go to. So maybe in, in some ways, that's a funny concept because I actually, in some ways, don't buy into plan B. I guess that's not plan B, that's strategy. I don't, I don't love plan B when it comes to manifesting because I feel like if you are preparing for plan B that you truly don't believe plan A is going to work. But that's different from having two doors because that's strategic. So rewind on that. <laughs> All right. If Prairie Dog has surfaced in your cards today, it may be a warning that your body's fuel gauge is running low. You might need a day. Oh, it's about retreat. They retreat down, regroup, regroup restore, rewire. Another thing that we do in Rise is we spend some time with breath work and you get a meditation every week that I've recorded and they're really, really amazing. <laughs> but you say so my mouth. Um, but the breath work that we do is very restorative and um, you can retreat into yourself if you're You might need a day of silence or retreat from regular activities before you become too exhausted to carry on And now it's like holiday time. It's perfect solstice day go inward use these. It's my favorite time Right now of the year to use these next two weeks to like disappear and go inward and I got these munchkins to do it with so I'm so excited so um yeah, Jamal, maybe it's time to just kind of chill out, take a bath, 
read a book, do nothing, you know. And you know, I know we were talking about growing your business and and the flow of abundance coming. Sometimes it's in the stopping, which is a part of the evolution cycle. Like when um, I work with my clients, there's always, and you know, because you do like lifting and, and physical stuff, rest is a part of the cycle. I mean, that is literally where we're in right now in winter is there's internal rest, like things are quiet, they, they're going in, they're, they're doing their thing, but they're still alive, they're going to come out and that's actually why we do rise in the springtime. We harness this energy right now of the seeds where we want to plant, they're underground, they're thinking, you guys are, you all are moving your minds, maybe your bodies are slower. And then spring comes and we just go. We use the energy of spring, all the green that's happening. It's so amazing. Um, have you put your basic needs on the bottom of your to-do list, burning the candle at both ends? Take a much needed break before you crash and burn. Prairie Dog teaches you that in order to access gifts of inspiration and renewal, you must be at peace with yourself and rested enough to recognize the blessings being offered. I love it. Great, great cards today. I'm digging this four o'clock action right now. I have a really special dinner tonight. Although, yeah, laying low, laying low. <laughs> um, all right. So how y'all feeling with your readings? Tapping in here. Chill out. The challenging part is sitting and resting. Yeah. Some people have that. I don't have that. I'm earth energy. I can sit on a couch and be like literally a boulder, like boom, so easy. Movement is my thing. I do well with people around me that have a, that energy of like, come on, let's go. And I'm like, oh, but it's good for me. It keeps me up and out and active. All right. So this was the talk on Evolve, and we've covered some really beautiful concepts around being the creator of your life and really just embracing that life is that embracing the art of evolving and that if you learn to treat it like an art form that you have the opportunity to really embrace all of the little special in between moments and not stay stuck or in frustration or sadness longer than you need to extract the lesson from it because i'm never saying that don't be in any emotion. I would, I, I'm actually the opposite. Everything is traveling with its counterpart. So it's not that you fall down. It's how fast you get back up that defines self mastery. So if you're interested in um, the rise program, just holler at, holler back at me. Let me know. We'll set up a time to talk. We have the early bird special. Now we move from the pre-sale to the early bird. All the information's on my website, metamorphize.com slash rise. It'll be linked around here and I will, not see you next week. I'm taking next week off, I think. And then I'm taking, uh, I ended up booking my flight on a Tuesday. So I'll just do an impromptu in the morning on my way to Mexico. I don't know if it'll be an official Tuesday talk. And then I'll check you out and see you on the other side when I get to Mexico. And we'll see, change some things up. So one love everyone. Take care of yourself. Stay healthy. Stay awake and aware and active and reach out if you need any support in your life. I am a mind mastery coach and breathwork practitioner helping you be the creator of your life. One step at a time, one breath at a time, and one thought at a time. Peace out. <laughs>